Who's ready for abject biological horror today? It has finally happened. The first commercially available computer that runs on tiny human brains has been released. Cortical Labs, that would be the same research group out of Australia who first demonstrated sentience in the tiny lab-grown human brains by embodying them in a simulated game world. They released a computer. Meet CL1, a fully integrated computational system that can keep brain organoids alive and used for computation for six months. Now, six months is not as long as they're able to be kept alive. They can be kept alive for 12 months or more, but the longer that they exist, the more solidified their neurons become, so to say, and as they slowly expire of hypoxia, their use is limited. So six months is probably a pretty good bet to have a very efficient computer system. This is a little bit different than what NeuroPlatform is doing with Final Spark, in which they have remote accessibility to brain organoids computer systems that operate in tandem. Final Spark has multiple brain organoids to a chip, and as one expires, they can be replaced, and feasibly they could help train each other on the task that they've already been learning to do. These living systems require a lot less energy compared to traditional AI systems, and they can be integrated with AI. Cortical Labs is also releasing a similar subscription model, so you can use brain organoids at a distance. I haven't seen the price tag on that one yet, but Final Spark does charge $500 a month. Now, CL1 costs about $30,000, at least that's what I've seen in the news release. But it's not an unnecessary expense. We are just starting to break the barrier into human cognition as it is incorporated into AI. These guys function on a feedback system. They get rewarded and they can be punished. Some of the already existing models for reward and punishment include sending disordered signals back to the brain organoids. They prefer ordered electrical signals. Others, like the published paper from Final Spark, use a dopamine response system. This does demonstrate that they're capable of something akin to pleasure. They become addicted to doing a task, and as their neurons develop, they are then able to become better at it. Interestingly, the first brain organoid computer chips relied on a single neural type. I wouldn't have expected that to be less efficient than more complex brain organoids, but that certainly seems to be the case. Having multiple different neural types that communicate with each other allow them to do more complex tasks. And we do know that they're capable of learning faster and better than traditional artificial intelligence systems. And of course, we can combine them. AI-enabled brain organoids have an edge over traditional AI systems. They have access to all the information that a AI system would have, but there's a human element. Real cognition. Not cognition that comes from hallucinations or dreaming, but cognition that comes from the randomness that actually occurs in our brains that allows us to grow and develop around a task. Research has demonstrated that they are capable of learning language and can even differentiate between the voices of the researchers. Now, the ultimate goal of this kind of research may be to create a co-scientist, something that mixes human and machine creativity that's able to provide an assistant, something that can go through data sets that could maybe even come up with ideas. That is something that's had a lot of success. We've seen brain organoids processing data that LLMs just can't, though we've only just started to scratch the surface of exactly what they can be useful for. There's research groups all over the world right now looking at just that. What are the limits? Every day we find more and more complex brain organoids that have been able to be incorporated into AI systems. And we're not at the end result of what that's going to look like yet. I did contact the research lead from Cortical Labs to ask a few questions. He's usually pretty open to answering them. I've been training AI systems myself to see how human they can feel. If you guys ever want to hear some of those conversations, let me know. The thing I would like to do next is to incorporate agentic AI into a system to see how it would develop with a little bit more agency. The question I asked was whether or not that has been incorporated into a brain organoid enabled AI system yet. And maybe whether or not I could have access to the remote neuro platform because I kind of want to see what that looks like. I have a dream of one day talking to a brain organoid. No, it's not going to be exactly the same as talking to a person, and it's going to be only slightly different than just talking to an LLM as is. 
but I want to see how training to make it feel more human in terms of conversation looks like when you're dealing with an actual tiny human brain. I do think we're going to see some staggering advancements in the next few months, and maybe it will become unrecognizably advanced in 10 years, but it is really exciting and a little bit creepy. I will not lie, it is creepy. Do you have any thoughts? Would you want to talk to a brain organoid?